Can we travel through time? Of course we can. We do it all the time. But can we do it at a different rate than normal? Again, the answer is yes, because of what's known as the time dilation effect in Einstein's theory of relativity. But time dilation enables only a limited kind of leap into the future, one from which we can't return to the present. By genuine time travel, we're talking about the ability to jump forward or backward through time at a rate other than that of the ordinary progression of events, or that enabled by the relativistic time dilation effect. The possibility of travelling through time poses such a threat to causality and opens the door to so many disturbing paradoxes that some scientists feel inclined to dismiss it out of hand. However, it's been a favourite theme of science fiction since the 1880s. In The Time Machine, published in 1895, H.G. Wells gives a pleasant preamble about the nature of the fourth dimension before whisking his hero 802,000 years into the future. Says the time traveller, whose real name we never learn. Any real body must have extension in four directions. It must have length, breadth, thickness and duration. There are really four dimensions, three of which we call the three planes of space, and a fourth, time. There is, however, a tendency to draw an unreal distinction between the former three dimensions and the latter, because it happens that our consciousness moves intermittently in one direction along the latter, from the beginning to the end of our lives. Unfortunately, Wells isn't specific about how his time-travelling device works, though we know that Parts were of nickel, parts were of ivory, parts had certainly been filed or sawn out of rock crystal. In more recent times, physicists speculating on some of the more esoteric byways of relativity and quantum mechanics have been a little more forthcoming about how time travel might be achieved in practice. These speculations have variously involved wormholes, which might provide shortcuts outside of normal space and time, faster than light particles known as tachyons, and unusual cosmological models such as the Girdle universe, which allow movement to any point in the future or the past. Let's leave aside the practical aspects though and focus on the logical issues connected with breaking the time barrier. The various time travel possibilities dealt with in science fiction fall into two broad categories. In the first, the timeline from deepest past to darkest future is frozen and immutable, like a film strip. Any time travelling that takes place is constrained by this preordained structure, effectively already written into the narrative of the world, the block universe of Einsteinian physics, and is thus prevented from leading to paradoxes. In one variant of this scenario, the so-called Novikov self-consistency principle applies. Named after Igor Novikov, an astrophysicist at Copenhagen University, this asserts that any attempt at time travel that would lead to a paradox is bound to fail, even if the cause of failure is an extremely improbable event. In other words, try as you might to introduce a contradiction into the timeline, like the grandfather paradox in which you accidentally kill one of your ancestors in the past, so that you could never be born, circumstances will always conspire to prevent you. Another variant on the fixed timeline concept is that any event that appears to have caused a paradox has in fact created a new timeline. The old timeline remains unaltered, and the time traveller becomes part of a new temporal branch line. One difficulty with this arrangement is that it might violate the principle of conservation of mass energy, unless the mechanics of time travel demand that mass energy be exchanged in precise balance between past and future at the moment of travel. However, the concept of branching universes and alternative histories isn't outrageous in physics where the many worlds hypothesis and Feynman's sum over histories are routinely debated. The second main type of time travel entertained in science fiction assumes that the timeline is flexible and changeable. This can lead to all sorts of mind-boggling difficulties and contradictions. A way to offset some of these problems is to stipulate that the timeline is very resistant to change, 
In the extreme case, as writer Larry Niven has argued, it may be a fundamental rule that in any universe where time travel is allowed, no actual time machine is ever invented. In 1991, Stephen Hawking put this idea on a more formal footing with his chronology protection conjecture. According to this, quantum effects will always conspire effectively to prevent time travel where classical physics, including the general theory of relativity, might otherwise allow time travel to occur. The chronology of protection conjecture, or CPC, states that solutions to the general theory that permit closed time-like paths are physically meaningless. Hawking quipped that the CPC makes the universe safe for historians and provides one possible answer to the question, where are the hordes of tourists from the future? On the other hand, if the timeline is presumed to be easily changed, paradoxes threaten to spring up at every turn. One of the most remarkable of these is the closed causal curve paradox in which it seems something can be got for nothing. Samuel Mines summarized the plot of his 1946 short story as follows. A scientist builds a time machine, goes 500 years into the future. He finds a statue of himself commemorating the first time traveler. He brings it back to his own time and it's subsequently set up in his honor. You see the catch here? It had to be set up in his own time so that it would be there waiting for him when he went into the future to find it. He had to go into the future to bring it back so it could be set up in his own time. Somewhere a piece of the cycle is missing. When was the statue made? Closed loops in time can also conjure knowledge out of thin air. A man builds a time machine and travels into the past to give the plans for the device to his younger self who then builds the machine, travels into the past and so on. Where did the plans originate? A curious thing about time loops is that they have no easily discernible future and past because all the events taking place in them affect one another in a circular way. Time loops also put a question mark over free will. What happens if the younger man, given the time machine plans by his older self, decides not to build a device? Can he make that choice given that in some sense he's already built it? Perhaps the apparent absence of time travels and time machines in the real world is a sign that we don't have to worry about such issues, at least for the present.